Hey there folks and welcome back to Space Engineer's Survival. As you can tell, some work has been done on our base to expand a little bit. We're going to go over what has been done. Uh, actually, quite a lot of work has been done. Um, first, we'll start off with the outside. As you can see, there is a large addition here. And that has added a lot of interior volume. And we also added two Gatling turrets for defense from both the onslaught of continual drones and asteroids, obviously. We still have this one here, but this one's going to be transferred over to the top at some point in time. Actually, that some point in time is going to be this episode, because this entire rest of the ship is going to be ground away. And we're going to use those components for this ship. A little bit of work has been done on this ship. We uh, finished some of the conveyors, we finished the cargo containers, and we also finished enough engines so that if we throw in some hydrogen and a gyroscope, we can actually operate the ship. So there's a thruster in every direction, actually a couple thrusters in every direction right now. So if it does break off, uh, it won't go floating away. If it has hydrogen in it, that is. So let's start off with the changes to the base on the inside now. Uh, our entrance is still on this side. The As you can tell, there's a gravity generator now, I believe. I think so. I think I built a gravity generator. Maybe I didn't. <laughs> I'm going to have to double check that. Uh, anyhow, there's a button for uh, depressurizing and pressurizing the air vent in here. Right now, you can tell, looking through the window, the airlock is depressurized. So we can just enter. And to pressurize the airlock, there's another button inside. And there we go. Pressurizes it. And now, yes, as, uh, as there is a proper airlock, the interior volume of this is now pressurized. And, well, looks like uh, our Gatling turrets are being put to work as the asteroids come in. And as you can tell, there is a large amount of work that has been done. This is our original refinery. However, we expanded it to have two more, and each one of these uh, refineries is completely filled up with, uh, I believe these are speed modules, to help speed up the production of or speed up the refinery of all of our materials and they are all linked together via conveyors to the assembler which now are all linked up together and one of the assemblers has a speed module on it as well we have some batteries just like before and we have another airlock this is a special one I'm not sure if this is pressurized or depressurized because there's no window so Let's assume that it's, yes, yeah, pressurized. Okay. And just like the other one, there's a, uh, something for pressurizing and depressurizing. Make sure our light is on. And this is into the interior of the asteroid. This is completely sealed off, so if we want to expand our base, all we need to do is mine out here and we can expand our base. And also another button for depressurizing and pressurizing the airlock. I could make this work all via sensors, but... Right now, this is the way it's going to be. All right, we can turn that off and pressurize it back. And we'll open it back up. And that is not everything that has been done. As you can tell, there is a second floor to this. We moved the staircase from over there, which was kind of janky and weird. Now we can actually use it. Okay, I guess the gravity generator is not completed, but this will all be the... CIC section, the command and control section, um, and all this stuff's eventually going to be moved down here. And up here we still have our generators. If we want to expand our generator bank, we have room, and now we can kind of access all of this a lot easier than we could have before. So, that's basically all that's been done. It, it took a significant amount of time, but we actually got it done. Um, this is just a regular airlock, which will bleed out air, so I'm not going to use it as much because there's no um, no air vent in the airlock itself. So, let's take a look at what was done to the ship. Well, actually, I think I... if I'm not sure if I mentioned it already, but yeah. Um, there. If I haven't, I'll mention it quickly. We have uh, thrusters in every direction now, so if uh, the ship gets knocked off its uh, base, all we have to do is throw in some hydrogen and th there'll be enough uh, hydrogen and some power really and then there'll be enough uh, 
thrust in each direction to keep it from floating away. But before we actually continue work on this, we really, 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 really need a welding ship because doing this by hand is untenable. And we will definitely be making that this episode. However, to get the components for that, we're going to grind away this ship. Uh, we do actually have a significant amount of ore, actually. I went mining with this ship several times, and we have a decent amount of inventory right now. So let's hide the empties. So we have, this is uh, what our current inventory is. I tried to condense it as much as I could. We have a decent amount of uh, components, probably definitely enough to build a welding ship. And we also have plenty of iron, nickel, silicon. And now that we have all those refineries, I managed to refine everything that we had. And I managed to mine a little bit of platinum, silver, and gold uh, just from the asteroid impacts on this particular asteroid. So there's a little bit more in some of the other cargo containers. And also, as you notice, the Gatling turrets are hooked up to the conveyor system so that they also uh, can be fed their Gatling turret ammunition all the time. So let's uh, throw that in there and that'll get refined right away because that'll go straight to the refineries and there we go. So let's find our grinding ship and we're going to keep this ship docked to it just so it doesn't float away and we'll make sure there's nothing valuable on board that we don't want ground up. Make sure there's nothing in the refinery. I don't think there's anything in the assembler. We haven't used it in quite some time. Yep. All right, so I think this is going to be safe to grind up. There's nothing else in here that we're going to be worried about losing. So let's get started.
And it's gone. So we ground up the entire ship. We moved our other ship over here. We actually were perilously, perilously low on uranium ingots for this ship. So I uh, had to take some out of the ship over here. I did also clean up the debris field a little bit and found some uranium and some Gatling turret ammunition, which is always good. But now we don't have any gravity, but that won't be a problem because we actually had some gravity generator components. I believe it was in the jump drive. So if we look in here and look for a large container, we have some... Where is the gravity generator? We have some gravity generator components which we can use to make a gravity generator. So we are going to do that. And right now we're just going to use our magnetic boots instead of using the uh, instead of using the jetpack. And let's see, how many do we need? We only need six, so perfect. We have more than enough for this gravity generator. And I guess we can keep this here for now. Uh, once we have more uh, CIC stuff, we'll make a CIC room. But this will be more than adequate for now. And let's make sure the field width is all up so that we can have the entire breadth of this base inside of the gravity generator field. And we might actually be able to make some medical Meteor components if we don't have any already. So let's take a look and see if we do. Let's look under inventory. Medical components. We have one medical component. Um, let's put this uh, gravity generator thing back. There we go. So, let's take a look at production. Can we make any? No, we are missing the silver. Okay, so we need some silver before we can make our medical bay. But one thing that we can do is we do not have a survival pod in here, which we should have just for respawn purposes. So I'm going to make a survival pod. We'll put it in here, and we'll just hook it up to a conveyor, an empty conveyor spot. Uh, perhaps this will do. Something hitting our sh base. I thought I heard a little clang, but guess not. So let's go into our inventory. We'll take some of this. And we'll need some of these, some of these. I think we need some small steel tubes, but let's uh, just plop one down right now. Survival kit. So we do need some medical components for the survival kit. <laughs> Maybe we can actually steal the medical components from the survival kit in the yellow ship because this base is far more protected than the yellow ship. If, uh, if we lose this base, it's going to be a lot worse than if we use, lose Old Faithful over here. So we're going to actually grind away the survival kit in here. And I think it's about time we can do that. And make our permanent base our permanent base. Also, as you can see, I recolored the red uh, on here. Now everything's all the same color. We'll maybe do some base stylization at a later date, but let's make it more functional right now. There we go. This should be all hooked up to everything. So, yep, it tops off our O2 too, which is perfect. But we will move this up there uh, when we have our medical bay and when we have more components to do so. We still need our medical components though, which we need silver for. However, we have more than enough components now to make, actually if we look at our large, we have more than enough components to make a relatively decent welder ship, which is absolutely critical if we want to build our 
large attack craft. Or almost want to call it a frigate, but it's not going to be quite that powerful. But we will need a welder ship to build this, so... Oh, also one other thing is uh, we started to have some drones sneak up on us on this end, so I have this ship uh, with the Gatling turret pointed over here to defend us. We may also need to put some defenses over here. But uh, this is working for now. I think that'll be it. Uh, we should probably begin work on the welder ship, so cue the music. Right, and we're back, and this is the ship that we came up with. It's a uh, six-welder design, three welders on each side, connected via uh, connectors, or, well, conveyor tubes, to a large cargo container, which is connected via a connector, which we can connect to our station. And, unlike the rest of our designs, this one is battery-powered. And because it's battery powered, it will have to charge via connecting to a station. Uh, I decided to not do the whole uh, reactor route as uranium is a little bit hard to come by as of right now. So using reactors when we don't have to is unnecessary, especially when we have solar panels here and hydrogen power and we can just uh, power it up via that. So. Uh, we also put a Gatling turret up top because we're going to have lots of valuables inside of the uh, cargo container in there, which I tried to cover up mostly with uh, armor and whatnot. Uh, so if some ship decides to shoot at us, we will, number one, be able to shoot back, and it'll be slightly armored. So that's the idea behind it. So let's head inside. Whoops, that's not inside. Let's head inside. And... Let's look at our inventories. So we have a large cargo container. That's the uh, cargo container for our ship. So let us... I think we need some metal grids. Actually, quite a lot of them. So we're going to throw some metal grids in our cargo container here. Uh, probably a good 750. And that still has plenty of room in it, so now that that has something in it, we can hide the empties and we don't have to scroll nearly as far. Uh, we should probably put a lot of construction components in, probably a good 1,000. And we'll just fill this up with all of our necessary requirements to build our ship. A little bit of everything, basically. And oops, still have quite a bit of steel. I would say we will need a lot of steel, so 5,000 is probably what we will need. And small steel tubes, large steel tubes, motors, and that sort of thing will also be required. Oh, that's a little bit too much, so we're going to only go with 400. And I think we also needed some motors. We'll fill the rest with motors. 
Yep, still have some room too. Maybe some large steel tubes. I bet you. Know, I think we actually need more large steel tubes than we need anything else. And it looks like that completely fills it. No, nope, not quite. There's just a smidge of room left. Maybe we can throw some computers in there or something. Just a few. But, actually what we can do, I need to set up these blocks so that the connector can be disconnected. Let's see here, it should be called connector 1. Unlock. There we go. Perfect. And now I'm going to set up the hotkey. Switch lock. There we go. Perfect. And now we should be able to uh, start welding on our ship. Looks like I might need a little more side thrust. It's just a bit slow with uh, all this weight. Alright, let's see. Is it going to work? Oh yes, it's working masterfully. So much better than doing it by hand, and I don't have to worry about running out of oxygen or running out of power. Because this has four hours worth of power, which is great. And having so many welders really does speed up the whole process, too. Because at any given point in time, I think at least two welders are touching the block that we want to be welding, so that makes it so much nicer. It's like, is that done? There we go. That's all finished. I think we're just going to do a couple more blocks as a demonstration, and I'll probably do the rest off screen just uh, to save you guys the gory details. But it seems like it's working great. Might be a little bit unwieldy with so much... Uh, weight inside the cargo container, but as we continue to weld, it does get lighter. So that's good. Let's see here, how much have we actually used so far? We've actually used a decent amount. About 7,000 uh, kilograms worth already, so that would have taken a significant amount of time to do by hand. Oops, and I'm Still haven't got the uh, flying around in this thing quite right yet, but I'll get there. Is this one? That one's done. So, ooh, yeah, it's a little bit big. I'll just have to be careful. All right. Flying around in this is a little bit of a chore, as it's not as uh, small as I'm used to, but we'll get used to it. And I think we'll actually be able to finish up the thrust pods. Yeah, we'll be able to finish up the thrust pods, no problem. That takes almost no, no time at all. Perfect. Let's just have a couple more to do. A couple up top and a couple on the side, and we'll be done. And then we'll have to start building again. But this makes everything oh so much easier. Are we out? We might actually be out of what's required for that one. We'll have to take a look. I think we need steel tubes would be my guess. Let's look at our inventory. No, we're out of the metal grids. Well, at least it's not too hard to just dock and grab some. But we got a lot more than we would have got done by doing it by hand. That's for certain. Oh no, donk. What I'm going to do is I'm going to also just weld this last one up. I think we have, yep, there we go. We have everything required for that. 
I might want to build a smaller <laughs> a smaller welding ship too, but uh, this one is going to be great for doing large swaths of the ship at any given time. This would actually honest be, honestly be a lot better if we used a blueprint and a projector, but because we're doing this the old-fashioned way, that's not going to work for us. Anyhow, let's fly on over here, we'll dock it back up, and uh, finish it, I think at a later date though. Oh no, donk. Yeah, I need a little bit more side thrust on there too, but or just I need to learn how to <laughs> fly it. Anywho, see if there's any damage to it, probably not. That was a light little tap, yeah. No damage to speak of. Perfect. So, you know what? I think that'll be it for this episode. Thank you, folks, for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time.